The second issue of the Darth Vader comic dove into the life of the clone trooper immediately after the Clone Wars. That seems like a good reason to talk about what happened to the clones in the cloning facilities on Kamino after they had served their purpose. With the Jedi gone and the Clone Wars at an end, the Empire decided to make a change. The operations on Kamino were immediately shut down. The last batch of clones were allowed to complete their training, but it became clear that stormtroopers would be replacing them shortly. According to Lucasfilm, part of the reason clones were phased out was because they were surprisingly independent. The Empire realized they would have an easier time controlling, training, and in some cases brainwashing their own citizens. Even so, the clones were talented soldiers, and they could very rarely be seen serving the Empire as far as the time of the Battle of Yavin. Some remained stormtroopers, but the best job they could hope for, and one that would keep them serving longer, was the position of the Royal Guard. The comic shows us a few ambitious clones choke on those exact aspirations. The book Lords of the Sith also proves that at least one clone was able to wear the red armor. But for the most part, it looks like the clones that survived the Clone Wars were relegated to jobs they found to be beneath them. For example, they helped Palpatine remove any reminders of the Jedi from the galaxy. They were sent to Jedi Outpost to take inventory of holocrons, weapons, and more to be crated up and sent back to Coruscant. Of course, we also know of three clones that were branded as traitors by the Empire. Rex, Gregor, and Wolf all removed their inhibitor chips and did not betray the Jedi. By the end of the Clone Wars, Rex and Gregor were both thought to be dead. We aren't sure about how Wolf escaped, but the three clones hid themselves on the planet Celos until they were discovered and Rex joined the fight against the Empire. Finally, I think I need to touch on the clone Grey from the Kanan comics. He spent the days after Order 66 hunting the Padawan Caleb Doom, but eventually came to completely doubt the Empire and kind of snap out of the spell of Order 66 and his inhibitor chip. He wound up sacrificing his own life to allow Caleb to escape, and I wouldn't be surprised if this happened to other clones. Maybe they were considered to be unstable after Order 66, and that could be another reason they were pushed out of service. Star Wars Legends handled the clones of Jango Fett a little differently. They were still transitioned into stormtroopers, but cloning wasn't shut down. The Empire gained complete control of Kamino so that the Kaminoans would continue providing new soldiers. A group of resentful cloners created a new batch of Jango Fett clones that were utterly loyal to Kamino. They were discovered and the operation was destroyed by the 501st Legion. This event led Palpatine to believe that an army composed entirely of clones based on one genetic source was too susceptible to corruption. From that point forward, new clone stormtroopers were created from various templates, and human enlistment began. By the time of the Galactic Civil War, only about one-third of the Imperial Army was made up of clones. Some Clone Wars veterans, like Commander Cody, were responsible for training these new clones and recruits. The clones of Jango Fett viewed the non-Fett clones and the regular human soldiers as an embarrassment to the legacy of the Grand Army of the Republic. Advancements in cloning continued to be made even beyond the Battle of Endor. Grand Admiral Thrawn revitalized the failing Empire by using Salamiri to create an army of clones in a matter of weeks, a process which would have resulted in mentally unstable soldiers back during the Clone Wars. So the main difference between canon and legends here is the amount of respect shown to the clone troopers after the execution of Order 66, which was their ultimate purpose. In canon, they were shut down and almost entirely forgotten about, except for a couple rare circumstances. In Legends, it seems that the clones were much more readily accepted by the Empire and allowed to serve for the entirety of the government's existence. I'm not really sure which version I prefer. Back in the 90s, I really liked the idea that stormtroopers were clones, which seemed to make them even more faceless and expendable. But I also like the more tragic and emotional story of the clones in canon, which is exactly the opposite. Despite having the same face, the clones are all unique and I feel for them and I hate seeing them lose their purpose in life. So which version do you prefer? Canon or Legends or do you think both have their merits? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.